فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're going to carry on the explanation of the kitab دفع إيهام الضراب عن آيات الكتاب written by الشيخ العلامة محمد الأمين ابن محمد المختار ابن عبد القادر الجكني الشنقيطي رحمه الله تعالى We previously took three verses and we, on the felt we are on the fourth verse insha'Allah ta'ala today which is قوله تعالى the statement of Allah إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون The Sheikh رحمه الله he brings this ayah which is the sixth ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah تبارك وتعالى he says إن الذين كفروا Verily, the ones who are disbelievers, سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ It is the same on them, whether you advise, whether you, whether you warn them, أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ Or you don't warn them, for them it's the same. The same in what? لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They're not going to believe. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is saying to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that these disbelievers, these disbelievers, whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they are not going to believe you. It's the same. Whether you warn or you don't warn, it's the same. They are not going to believe regardless of the situation. So, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, Rahimahullah, he says, هذه الآية تدل بظاهرها على عدم على عدم إيمان الكفار. This ayah from its ظاهر from the apparent. When we look at this ayah from the ظاهر from the apparent, what it shows is على عدم إيمان the the lack of disbelief from the disbelievers. In other words, the disbelievers will not believe. This is the ayah from the apparent. What it shows us is that the disbelievers, that they are not going to believe. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي آيَاتٍ أُخَرْ مَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ بَعْضِ الْكُفَّارِ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ but there has come some verses. <coughs> but there have come some verses that indicate that some of the disbelievers will believe in Allah and His Messenger. So we have what seems to be a contradiction. It seems it. Apparently, that's what it seems to us right now. Because this ayah is saying that the disbelievers if the Prophet warns them, or he doesn't warn them, it's the same. They are not going to believe. But then we have other verses that have come in the Qur'an that state that the disbelievers are going to, some of them, sorry, some of them, they will believe in Allah and the Messenger. Such as what? Such as the statement of Allah, wa ta'ala, Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 30. <coughs> Ayah 38, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, إِن يَنْتَهُوا If you leave off, إِن يَنْتَهُوا يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ سَلَفْ If you leave off what you are upon, 
and the misguidance and the disbelief and you come to Islam, then everything you have done previously, you will be forgiven. So this ayah is showing that they can change and that there is change in that can happen. Whereas the other ayah negated that. There's another verse in Surah An-Nisa, ayah 94. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ كَذَلِكَ كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا And like that before you were, meaning the Sahabas, before that you were also disbelievers, you didn't have faith. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he bestowed his mercy onto you. So you became believers. So this goes against that the disbelievers will not believe. Also, وَمِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 47. And from these, وَمِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ And from these, I mean disbelievers, مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ there are those who believe in him, Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So how do we reconcile between these verses that are alluding to, that are asserting that the disbelievers will become guided and they will take Islam and they will take the, the religion. And this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 6, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ How do we reconcile between them is what we want to do here. So the Sheikh says, وَوَجْهُ الْجَمْعِ ظَاهِرٌ Before I move into the وَجْهُ الْجَمْعِ the way to reconcile between them and to show that these verses are not going against one another, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari رحمه الله in his tafsir and also the same as Imam Ibn al-Jawzi in his Zad al Al-Masir and Ibn Jarid Tabari in his tafsir as well. Ibn Jarid strengthens that the people who are intended in this verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The ones who are intended here, he said it is the Ahbaru al-Yahud. Ibn Jarid Tabari رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He says that المعنيين بِهَذِي الْآيَةِ هُمْ أَحْبَارُ الْيَهُودِ The ones who are intending this verse إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Ibn Jarid Tabari asserts that this is intended by the أحبار اليهود The ones who like in which one? الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا عَلَى الْكُفْرِ who were killed upon this belief and they died upon it and he weakened Ibn Jarid Tabari did this he weakened the interpretation and the explanation that says that it's general for the disbelievers. He didn't like that and he weakened that opinion. And he used to prove his point, Ibn Jarir Tabari, that the verses before it and the verses after it, you see, are referring to the Ahlul Kitab. And this is his wordings, he says, فَإِذَا كَانَ الْخَبَرُ أَوَّلًا عَنْ مُؤْمِنِي أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَآخِرًا عَنْ مُشْرِكِيهِمْ فَأَوْلَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ وَسَطًا So the first part one, the first part was about who? The Muslims, the believers. And then it was about the Mushrikeen. And so he said the middle is referring to the Ahlul Kitab then. If you look at the, the first one is talking about the people of the books, is the, meaning the, Quran, the, the, uh, the believers, the Mu'minin, who were holding on to their book. The true book. So he's called them the Ahlul Kitab of the Mu'minin. And then he called um, the second one, he called it the Mushrikeen. Uh, the last part was the Mushrikeen. And then he said the middle should be what? فَأَوْلَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ وَسَطًا The middle should be the Ahlul Kitab of the Ahbaru al Yahud. So this is his opinion. Now, Ibn uh, Muhammad Amin al is not going to go far off that opinion. But he takes a more of an Usuli approach. An usuli approach, he, he says, وَوَجْهُ الْجَمْعِ ظَاهِرٌ وَهُوَ أَنَّ الْآيَةَ مِنَ الْعَامِ الْمَخْصُوصِ He says that this verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ The disbelievers that it's referring to is al-aam, but it's al-makhsus. 
So what does Aamun Makhsus mean? Aamun Makhsus means Aamun fi lafdihi, the wording is general. Makhsusun fi muradihi, but the intent behind it is not general. Does that make sense? The wording is general, yes. But, huh? but the intent and the meaning that the Sharia he wants here is not general, it's specific. It's not for every disbeliever. So they call this Aamun Makhsus. And there's something I need to mention as a side benefit for the Talaba to the Ilm who do know these terms. There is a difference between Aamun Makhsus and there's a difference between uh, and what do you call it? Aamun Urida bihi al Makhsus. Those are the, the two, they're two different. And the difference here is not as some have said that this is a khilaf that has come from the mutaakhirin, the latecomers. La you find this in the books of Ibn uh, uh, the ulama of the mutaqaddimin. For example, Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, some of his kalam in his al-Risala and his kitab Jumma' al-Ilm. If you read them, you see there's a difference between Aamun Makhsus and Aamun Urida bihi al-Khusus. Aamun Urida bihi al-Takhsis. You see there's a difference between it. The Aamun Makhsus and Aamun Urida bihi, they're not the same. Even Ibn al-Daqiq al-Aid, rahimahullah ta'ala, he also proves that when he says those two, that he doesn't mean the same thing. Ibn Daqiq al-Aid, rahimahullah ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the same, he says it. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, and is Al-Mustasfa, he mentions the same. I'm not sure because it's been a long time ago. Uh, if um, uh, Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, he brings it in his Rawdatul Nadir, wa Jannatul Munadir, which is an abridged version of the Mustasfa of Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali. If he also mentions the same, I don't remember Ibn Qudama, but I know Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali, Ibn Daqiq Al-Eid, Ibn Taymiyyah, and Imam Al-Shafi'i. So, and within the Shafi'i, and even the Bahar, al muhit uh, you, you find it in, in the more details. Shawkani, and Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, in his Ishad al-Fuhul, fi tahqiqi ilm al-Usul, you find the same, rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'ah. May Allah have mercy upon each and every one of those scholars. So what does the Aamun Makhsusun mean? Aamun Makhsusun means it is general in its wording, but it's specified in its meaning. Uh, he says, لِأَنَّا فِي خُصُوصِ الْأَشْقِيَاءَ الَّذِينَ سَبَقَتْ لَهُمْ فِي عِلْمِ اللَّهِ الشَّقَاوَةِ الْمُشَارُ إِلَيْهِمْ بِقَوْلِهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِمْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَلَوْ جَاءَتْهُمْ كُلُّ آيَةٍ حَتَّى يَرَوُوا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ وَيَدُلُّ لِهَذَا التَّخْصِيصِ قَوْلُهُ تعالى ختم الله على قلوبهم وأجاب البعض بأن المعنى لا يؤمن ما دام الطبع على قلوبهم وأسماعهم والغشاوة على أبصارهم فإن أزال الله عنهم ذلك بفضله آمنوا. So the Sheikh goes on to say in. So now we have to understand if it's general. Okay, we understood it. That's what we were saying all the time. But what is the meaning that the Sharia intends if it's the specification that the Sharia intends, what is it? The specification that the Sharia intends is those who have for them written with Allah ash, uh, ash that they are going to be from the people of the hellfire. With Allah's knowledge, it's written for these individuals. There's no place where they're going to enter Jannah. And the evidence for that is that th those are the ones meant by إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ ذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ is the fact Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said in Surah Yunus إِنَّ الَّذِينَ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِمْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ the ones who as Allah, the ones who Allah's Qadr has been placed for them in other words the Qadr has become that they are going to be the people the kuffar and they're going to die as kuffar and they're going to be from the people of the hellfire uh, those are never going to believe whatever the situation becomes whether it doesn't matter whether it comes to them 
كل آية every verse حتى يروا العذاب الأليم until they see the severe punishment of the hellfire. So those are never going to believe. However much struggle, however much hardship, however much effort that has been put to them, they're just the ones that are not going to believe. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for them that they are going to be from the people of the hellfire. And that they and they are. Also what strengthens that this meaning in Ladina Kafaru Sawa Una Alihim is it is na'am, general in its wording, but not in its meaning, is the verse after it, which is Khatam Allahu ala kulubihim. And it means wa yadullu li hadha taqsis. That specification is intended, that it's aam in its wording, makhsusun fi muradihi wa ma'ana. The evidence for that is qawluhu ta'ala khatam Allahu ala kulubihim. Allah sealed their hearts. Allah sealed their hearts. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's the ones whose hearts have been sealed from taking the religion. So it's not all of the disbelievers. Because some of them, their hearts will believe. And their hearts will accept that it's the religion. And then he mentions another answer some gave. He said, وَأَجَابَ الْبَعْضُ بِأَنَّ الْمَعْنَى And other scholars, they try to explain it by saying, لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They are not going to believe مَا دَامَ الطَّبْعُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ Another group of scholars, they said that they are not going to believe. Who's they? Who are not going to believe? Who's not going to believe? The disbelievers are not going to believe. As long as this, uh, uh, the tab Allah has placed on them, this thing Allah has placed over and covered their heart with, from taking on the religion, whilst it's there and this ghishawa is on them, this veil on their eyes is covering their eyes and their hearts are also blocked, whilst that's still there, they are not going to believe. فَإِنْ أَزَالَ اللَّهُ عَنُمْ But if Allah removes that from them with His mercy, آمَنُوا they will believe. آمَنُوا they will believe. And today if you really sit down and you look at these, for example, you look at these, um, uh, uh, these modern time atheists like Sam Harrison, uh, Richard Dawkins, and you look at late Christopher Hitchens who died, and likes them. You watch a lot of their debates, you come to realize that the, the debates and the things that they are saying has been answered. Even in some of their debates, you can see from their facial expression, they feel gobsmacked. They, they've been given a sufficient and a strong answer, but they're still not going to believe. Still, they're not going to be stubborn. Uh, still going to be carrying, uh, being stubborn. The reason is because Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Allah is, He sealed their hearts, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِمْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَلَوْ جَاءَتْهُمْ كُلُّ آيَةٍ حَتَّى يَرَوْا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ They are not going to believe until the hellfire comes in front of them. Those ones are not going to believe. That's where it ends for us on the fourth and uh, apparent contradictions uh, of the Qur'an. Uh, we'll carry on uh, another time. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمِ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشَدْ وَلَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَتُوْلِهِ